in our licensing system, similar to what pig and poultry farms need to need to um, abide by. So intensification should only be permitted if it can be demonstrated that it won't impact on water quality. And for existing farms that are deemed to be at risk, regulatory, voluntary or combined measures should be implemented, including through herd reduction, with compensatory measures put in place to support this where necessary. But most importantly, we need a solid evidence base that the measures farmers are putting in place are going to work. We know from the EPA what reductions need to happen and where. Chagas can model how we achieve those reductions. Why has that link not been made? Why aren't we joining the dots? And it's worth noting that there was a CSO study from last year and it found that 79% of people surveyed put water pollution as their top environmental concern above all else. And the reason that the public aren't being louder about this is that water pollution is often invisible. It's only a matter of time, though, before the public become aware of the scale of the problem we're facing with our water quality. And then they'll be looking for answers as to why this was allowed to be happen, why this was allowed to happen. So this is this is a key opportunity for us to try and turn this around. The science couldn't be clearer. We need an ambitious and far reaching river basin management plan to address this. And as I have demonstrated, it's not enough to rely on what we would say is an inadequate nitrates action program. And the river basin management plan that we've seen is really lacking in ambition, and we'd really like to see that addressed. Thank you.